What's going on YouTube? Prime here. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is episode 2 of a vampire walkthrough I'm doing. It's on hard mode, so... But as I said in the previous video of a vampire, is it really that hard when you start the game for the first time on hard mode? I'm now at a point where I don't know where I'm going. This is a bit that I got to last time. And I had it on my Xbox. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Mr. Hampton needs me right now. Come on, you bastard! You can do better than that! Nah! It's my turn! Rotten or crispy, each heart contains the of life. Drink at this river, dry it all. Oh, come on, you bastard! I won't bite! Sir, please! You've lost too much blood. Calm yourself. You think I didn't notice? Stop your staring and get me to an hospital, you ass! Insult me again and I'll put an end to your misery right now. Alright, alright, sorry. I am in pain. Guts are spilling out onto the street and you're yabbering on. Yes. That's a very nasty wound you've got there. Take my word, I was... I am a doctor. Dr. Jonathan Reed. <sighs> Name's Clay Cox. I'd appreciate you helping me to a better place, Doc. Follow me, Mr. Cox. Let me assist you to that better place. Why not? Why not kill Did I black out? Whoa, I feel giddy. What? What happened? It is wise for the huntsman to sometimes let his prey go, but no famished hunter can run for long. I've little time to play hide and seek with new staff members, no matter how illustrious they may be. I found a wounded man by the docks. He answers to the name of Clay Cox. He requires urgent medical attention. Already making the rounds? That's the Pembroke spirit. I'll ask our porter, Milton, to bring him back immediately. Thank you, nurse. What can I do for you? Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. Thank you. I would like to ask a few questions first. Mm. 
What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. Apologies, I've only just met him the once. This is sudden. I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The Administrator has better things to do than mix with us. And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. If you could point me in the direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. Thank you. Thank you, Nurse Crane. Thank you, Nurse Craig. Dr. Swansea is right. This place seems perfect to conduct my research. This must be the place. It's definitely away from prying eyes. Relegated to the shadows. A kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. The flower's dying. It needs water. The flower's dying. It needs water. more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. The sun is about to rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. I have so much time. Fight required, okay. The following night, okay. I'm to stay here until my research is complete. I'd better learn to hide my true nature from the mortals. The 
What about my thirst for blood? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Yes, Nurse Crane? How can I help you? I'm so sorry. I know Dr. Swansea wanted you to rest, but we have somewhat of a crisis. A crisis, you say? Our supply of antiseptics is nearly depleted. I was hoping there was another box up here, but... What type of hospital are you running? No antiseptics? You have been away too long, Doctor. With the war and now this epidemic, supplies have been running scarce for months now. I may have a solution. In France, during the war, drugs shortage was a daily problem, and we had to use our wits to overcome the shortages. However do you mean? If combined correctly, certain household chemical products can be used in a pinch instead. Now, where's the hospital storeroom? The storeroom? Fat chance. This is the Pembroke. And space is luxury we don't have. Everything used to be stored in the old morgue. Perhaps I should look there first. Where is this morgue? It's the large building behind the hospital. You'll need to go in the back door because it's been sealed off for sanitary reasons. Take this key. It opens a small back entrance at the end of a narrow street. The abandoned morgue behind the hospital. A small door at the end of a narrow street. On my way then. Thank you, nurse. Yes, Doctor? Why then do you always work the nights? Don't you ever sleep? At the Pembroke, we're always hands on deck. Lack of sleep and the medical profession always ends in disaster. I've witnessed many a colleague succumb to stimulants to fight exhaustion. Drugs were as deadly as bullets in the trenches. London's trenches start here at Pembroke Hospital. We are on the front line, make no mistake. Your dedication to the Pembroke does you credit, Nurse Crane, but when do you sleep? We staff get our sleep when we can, Doctor. Nursing is a vocation, not the labor of a journeyman. That's all for now, Nurse Crane, thank you. Gas not going our way. Scowl voices in the garden. I should investigate. If they were to find somebody.
I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Yeah, I need to put some more. I was trying to test out that new power, wasn't it? And we was doing it. I wanted to try that fucking one of the upgraders. I mean, once I get into the game, I probably won't die as much. Getting used to it. Some you are dying. I need more stamina, so I need to upgrade. Oh, how many fucking scouts are there? Me. What the f I thought I killed the one to be honest. Yeah, but I don't really find citizens in the, in the alleyways. Yeah, well, that's when I found let go. Mistake. Well, I got tried before. That's one thing. It wouldn't let me do that one power I wanted to do because my uh, thing is low. I need to feed. Oh, I'll kill this one again. Okay. Ah, 
Sunday. in the hospital. I am as well, I know. Some scales, I think, man. Maybe, I don't know. This way. Yep, just go for the garbage again. <laughs> as they are ineffective but they do contain iron tartrate and that might prove itself useful I am what How do I change it again? Oh shit, I forgot to change it. Uh, yeah, yeah that's right, that's just like. The 
This key will surely grant me access to the basement. Oh, fuck, right. Oh, fucker. Don't kill me. Yeah, he's trying to kill me, isn't he? I'll get out of him. Yeah. I've got no stamina or nothing. <laughs> and it just dodged the shotgun. Right, don't waste bullets on these guys. Yeah, I might just uh, try and find someone in a bit. See what happens. Shotguns are kind of shit. Um, on the stake, man. What well, stuns them, I guess. Let's try that. Let's try an influence. Hello. You're gonna feed on me. Oh my god. I'm getting out of here, man. You're gonna keep jumping on top of me, man. I meant to kill someone, I just gonna keep jumping up on top of me, trying to fucking eat me. Half a generate, man. I just literally just evading my attacks and just fucking jump on top of me. Man, he's a fucking scout, he's not a full breed vampire. Man, look. I hate these things, man. So the action is to jump on the thing I see. I need to go out and kill the one anyway, at least. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that's a really better weapon, wasn't it? I mean, look, my, st my stamina runs out so quick. <laughs> I don't know what the. Behavior is similar to the infected. Stamina runs out so quick, it's Must unreal. The same strain. The sickness moves faster than influenza. Oh, come on, man. No, I mean, I, I hit him, but. It, the first thing he's gonna do is jump on me. I've got no stamina or nothing. Alright. Stamina runs out too quick on it. Oh, I gotta say that. It runs out a bit too quick. I mean, I'm wasting hits and it. But. I, I would have had him if he. that somehow that hit actually hit. Instead of he just jumped through it. And jumped on me and started sucking my blood. <laughs> That's my fault for going hard mode, and I'll figure it out. But I do think the stamina goes a bit too quick at this moment. Well, I can't take on one at a time. I'm going to take on two or three at a time. But only fucking scales and I actually full boot vampires. I don't think. Times I'm going to be stuck in this little bit. Right, let's go down the, st the stairs a minute to see what I can find. Might give me some sort of stamina boost or something. Oh, how many skulls are there? These skulls feed from corpses and the husks of animals. They're not after blood. I mean, I killed him at one straight away, but... Oh, John Doe, hello. Boss fight. Whoa! I didn't expect that coming. I mean, look at... my stamina. Do something. Ah, oh, that's better. Two of them or something. I'm gonna die, I am, I'm dying. Uh, I knew I was gonna die because it's that shadow that's hitting me. How the f what is that thing?
at some point I'll get to a point where these skulls ain't in no problem. I'm still learning, so... Don't put me back to where I was. I don't quite think I'm strong enough to fight that guy yet. I think I am. Oh, that's a hospital. Oh, I'm just going to try and find that guy actually. you're here to fix my face. No. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars, if you get my drift. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. And what of my own life? Good evening, nurse. Yeah. Good evening, Doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Why does Milton dislike doctors? I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned, Milton is not the chatty type. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. 
How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? You must get a hold of yourself, Nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter. But I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Liz. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon. What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Howard? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. <laughs> she has no idea to see. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover. To hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, Sora, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. 
But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place, and he refused to let me go. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers' trade union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint, not even criminals. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest. And then I can go back to the people who need me. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. I'm trying to find the doctor. So I don't get any hints. Hello. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before, at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong, Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. Tell me more about cherished people then. Nurse Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. 
A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. It's not exactly the best situation in London either. I can't have expected this hospital to be prepared for what was to come. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks, maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed a body. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. That's I found that guy. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. Let's find, let's find him. Just looking around, see what I can find. So I can't feel it all in here. Yes, Doctor? Exactly how bad is the supply situation here at Pembroke? It really depends. Dr. Swansea deftly works his society contacts for monies, but with the quarantine, well, we're in God's hands. That's all for now, Nurse Crane. Thank you. Ah, solid. It's a bad thing here, wasn't it? Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did he really? It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, I'm a little surprised. I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced it is the future. Why does Dr. Tippett's claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippetts does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? If you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge, I really hope he doesn't.
Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannock. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? Perhaps you did it with the best intentions, Nurse Brannigan, but you took a great risk. Must I remind you that a man died? You mean you've never made a mistake? Never covered your tracks? Come on, Doctor. I wasn't born yesterday. I've decided that I won't reveal Dr. Tippett's, shall we say, misdemeanor. I'm so glad you share my point of view. Dr. Tippett's is a brilliant practitioner. We most definitely need his know-how. I hope you're right. This is a huge risk we're taking. Dr. Tippett's must regain his confidence. Please, keep this decision between you and me. He doesn't need to know you found out. <laughs> okay. How are things here? Not good, to say the least. We're struggling against an invisible enemy, more lethal than any bullet from a gun. It's hard, Doctor. An invisible enemy? What a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here. And we're trying to hold fast, but how do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tippett's. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. <laughs> I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Oh, okay. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Oh, I got enough. Mm. 
Thank you. So I, I, I'm still need to go back to the morgue to fair, but Investigate, okay. Oh, it's in that room. Which way am I going now? Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Okay, yes, sir. It's there, but I cannot enter. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Hello, Howard. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes, thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, Doctor. 
How is my son doing? Goodbye, Mrs. Goswell. So sorry, Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. She'd go all the way to Helen back to help me. Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother. Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, Doctor. <laughs> but you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. You can sweat that. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. No. I can cure as well. Oh, okay. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Oh, I've got the medicine. I will see you later. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good Stay evening, here. Doctor. How is my son doing? Oh, I just... Mrs. Goswick. I'm still not really sure what... Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Oh, there's always a hint thing. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Oh, this is all nurse. As you mentioned. Oh. I'll follow it and I'll take it. It's locked. Oh, 
Can't go in there. That's his room in there. I cannot enter. It's locked, all right. I'll go through there. Is he just gonna stand there? Or what am I to do? I cannot enter. Okay, let's work outside on this or Good evening, Mr. Cox. Dr. Reed! Still working at night, I see. I like that. And why is that? People who don't sleep at night always seem more alive to me. More interesting, one way or another. Do you ever think about that poor fellow I saw you push in the water? The wound he gave me will make sure I don't forget him. Still fucking hurts. Boss had cut me good. That man was determined to murder you. You almost died. What a surprise. The first time I met him, he nearly shit himself. Fucking coward. Well, I guess revenge gives you balls. What did he want? Revenge? I recently had to kill his brother. Poor arsehole thought it would be easy to return the favour. Only the strongest survive, then. Survival at all costs. Is that all you think about? I'm the toughest bastard you'll ever meet, Dr. Reed. And I don't give a fuck what you think of me. <laughs> How is your hospitalization going, Mr. Cox? This is a shitty place with shitty staff. As long as I'm treated all right, I'll be fine. What's wrong with the Pembroke staff? That bastard you said to bring me here, Milton. I thought he was going to break all my bones before I reached my bed. I see. Any other smart comments? The nurses aren't too ugly. Especially that foxy one, Nurse Crane. Pretty brunette, tough attitude, or like that. What's wrong with the hospital? Come on, Dr. Reed. The place is a dump. Smelly, sad, and dirty. But you're alive thanks to the efforts and dedication of the staff here, aren't you? What are you expecting, a medal? I thought that saving lives was just part of the job. Must be an unsatisfactory profession at this time, I'm sure. How long do you think you can escape the law, Clay? I know this city like the back of my hand, Doc. I know its streets, who to pay, who to avoid, and who to bully. I won't get caught. The police may be slow, but they will find you eventually. Well, how come you didn't turn me in then? Nah, dog. I figure you have something to hide so you can't ask the coppers for help. How long do you think you can escape the law, Clay? Ten, ten failed. <laughs> like the back of my hand, dog. I know its streets, who to pay, who to avoid, and who to bully. I won't get caught. The police may be slow, but they will find you eventually. Well, how come you didn't turn me in then? Nah, Doc. 
I figure you have something to hide so you can't ask the coppers for help. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Colt. Oh, what? You kidding me? I thought, I thought I would, I'd have got him. Why don't you hit him again? <laughs> Oops. I'm not sure what I meant to do, to be honest, because I know I'm not strong to keep that one downstairs in the morgue. It's the main mission. Not really entirely sure what I meant to do. I need to make my character stronger somehow, but. is dying. Come here, you. Oh, shit, I'm trying to lock onto him. You're dead now, ain't you, boy? Oh, there's two of them there. Thanks for blood, mate.
I need to rest to evolve, but what that means. I know I'm not strong enough to do the main mission, so I need to find a way to get strong enough. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. I don't know what you've heard about me. But I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something. Well, he does not like me. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before. But I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Aren't you too old for such jealousy? It really won't do you any good, you know. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Reed. A simple glance is enough for me to know you have nothing for me to envy. <laughs> this guy does not like me at all. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time, his enthusiasm has become... displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. No hint. Do you need my assistance? Not at all. I'm sure that you are used to gaining people's trust with your impressive skills. 
Well, it will not be the case with me. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Oh, he did not like me at all. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Do you need my medical attention, dear colleague? You don't have to worry about me, Dr. Reed. I am here to assist you, not to be a burden. Well, this is got likes me. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories at first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me. But I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Well, I've got an investigation. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Ah, oh, that a question because there's a hint on it here. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? What's my questions? Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father. Ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. Oh. 
Okay. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior. A man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones and flesh. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure, but my young colleague obviously disagrees. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. If you are going to lead this surgery, I am trusting you to assume the consequences of your actions, whatever the result. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. If you are going to lead this surgery, I am trusting you to assume the consequences of your actions, whatever the result. I am not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, okay. Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. I'm not sure what I meant to do in this game. I'm trying to find ways to make my character stronger, but I don't know. I just don't know. I need something more can get that stuff, but I'm not Thomas sure. Hancock to said she was being watched by vampire hunters. Where are they hiding? I should investigate. I'm sorry you ended up on my plane and cold medical bench, sir. I understand you must be very angry about this unfair situation. I managed to arrange to have you buried in the same mass grave as your wife. I hope that might help. It's locked. It's locked, all right. I'm sorry you ended up on my plane and cold medical bench. Sorry about the video cut for a second. Oh, how am I going to say? It's locked. It's locked. I haven't seen any other hazard, have I? Investigate six transactions. So, is that something? It's locked, alright. How can I meant to do that? But I can't get in there. 
very angry about this unfair situation. I managed to arrange to have you buried in the same mass grave as your wife. I hope that might help. I've got three people to get to know. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Oh, it's highly fiddick. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick, unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself, but I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army, building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Philip. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed, so I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about me. Okay. I think we'll leave it here for them in a minute, do best They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. 
But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Is there anything else that's bothering you? Can I help in any way? I'm all right. Considering the state of this place, I should consider myself lucky, I guess. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Children, Ella. As for me, I'm not really sure Good what I'm meant to do. <laughs> I really don't Good evening know. <laughs> to you, Doctor Reed. Can I be of any help? No, I don't think you can. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I've got two people to investigate. I can't. I cannot enter. I just have to investigate figures, investigate them before we get to a point. Of well, she's lost her marbles, yes. I killed him earlier, though. That didn't work out, did it? Oh, my half can down a quick run. Oh, that's one way to investigate what they're doing. A man that wasn't winning that event before, that's one way to investigate it. <laughs> For all that. Alright, let's try and get that morgue thing one last time. So I can defeat that thing. Probably gonna die. Most likely. I tried it a few times. Seems like I'm just not strong. My character's not strong enough to beat it. That's what it seems like. I don't know how much you're gonna beat him. What's up there? So I need to go down there. Oh, I miss skulls. Forgot these were down there. Wasn't you level 5 before? Oh 
shitty. Help me, man. Come on, stamina. I know there's another one down the bottom. Oh, there was before. Yeah. Take him out first. You kill oh, it's through, the boss is through there. You can kill the five pretty quick, but Come on. It's a stamina, man. Come on. One more hit and I'm dead, so I need to be careful what I do. Oh, I got him. Well, I've fallen blood, which means I got the oh, yeah, I've fallen blood. Probably gonna die. It's locked. House for the United. Let's go. Probably gonna die there in this, but It's just like, it's just not much. I don't think I can do this. I'm, I'm dying, watch. Like, I tried to hit him and I'm dying because I can't use my stamina. So many shadows hit him as I'm hitting him, so I don't think I'm gonna do this. I don't know. 
Oh, hang on, I might just do it. Yeah, I got him. I actually beat him. These skulls can be so ferocious. <gasps> I'm not sure I can defeat them without becoming stronger. Oh, to drink blood is so tempting. <sighs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I can't. I don't think I'm gonna beat him, man. I really thought I was gonna die then, because I died so many times yesterday. And I've come back to it today, beat him first time. Okay. Jeez. Sodium hypochlorite. Dangerous to administer, but efficient in the proper dosage. Well, I was about to ask what I'm out. Can I craft any of these? Well, I'll craft them that. I need to get out of there and back to the hospital. Oh, hello. Not gonna live off that too difficult to defeat. Not oh, maybe. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's got me. Caught me at one lower hit. Don't say I've got to do that fucking boss fight again, though, please. Level 5 is usually not difficult to, to um, beat. It's like four hits and they're pretty much dead usually. Or well, five, depending on what, what you use. Ah, oh, come on. Let's give what I need. Give the stuff back to. Oh, I'm back here. Good. Uh, full health, and I got no boss fight. I need to take the medicines back to Dark Ukraine. Uh, first, I'm changing my weapons. On them. Well, that's what I wanted. Okay. So I mean about the stamina button in this game, right? it's fucking awful. I, I just want about to beat him and kill him with more blow. I run out of stamina, I can't evade. And now I must get killed in the process. Oh. I need more in here, fuck me, loads of skulls. I'm just gonna get out of here.
infested with them. I've done the main part of the story anyway, at least. Let's get the stuff for the nurse. And I've done that thing I discovered yesterday. Ripped the patient that died. That's one thing. Uh, it's going to be quite long. Oh shit. <laughs> Come on, I need to get this done quickly so I can end the video. Come on, I'll it up. I need to make a coffee as well. Alright. This way. I think it's the way. Oh, I've got to do this again. Oh, fuck's sake. Come on, I open another now. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Take me piss. Oh, I'm back in the morgue. I thought it was the hospital. Oh, for fuck's sake. Let's go out in the long way. <laughs> I gotta do this again now. Sorry, guys. I can't remember where it was, I, I came up with more, straight into the hospital, I can't remember where that exactly is. Come on. I thought it froze my game, man, like I did earlier. Come on, this is the big ass one. How long do you want to take? <laughs> Jeez. There you are, I got there eventually. Yeah, well. Oh, oh was the other door like I shrink the hospital man there? Have to go to go see them. Bring the medicine to the doctor, crane in the patient's room. Where is she? Ah, oh, there she is. Finally, you've returned, doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, nurse. You've worked your first miracle, doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Okay, diseases create decreases the blood quality of a citizen. Use the correct medicine to heal him. Speak to patients in the room behind the office to check his medical status. This hospital seems to be falling apart. But in the circumstances, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. You are not a burden, sir. 
Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. I've had enough. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Covering, okay. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Well, guys, I'm going to leave it for today. I hope you enjoy. That's pretty much actually what you have to do. Um, it's a bit hard to figure out what I was meant to do, but because I didn't think my character was actually. You know, remember, since I provide you a massive XP boost. Look for citizens of your mesmerized level or below and choose wisely. Come now, we can handle this. We are on there to cover it.